Do you know what it means to work smarter, not harder? We're going to talk about that in this episode of 5 Minutes with Dad. Welcome to 5 Minutes with Dad, starring Pavlos and Angela Pavlidis, where you get to spend a few minutes with the smartest and coolest kids in the whole world, and their dad, too. And now, here are your hosts, Pavlos, Angela, and Nick Pavlidis. Who Ooh, has hey! an awesome episode of 5 Minutes with Dad? What am I, a lobster pie? No. What am I? You're a mushroom. A mushroom. Ooh, Pavlos is foreshadowing something. Mind blown. All right, Pavlos, we have an important episode today because this was something we learned just today when Pavlos was sitting down to do his homework. Don't give any spoilers away, but we had an opportunity to talk about how to work smarter and not just harder. Hard work's important. We work hard. We want to see something through, but it's super important to not just work hard, but also to use what's what are our hustle muscles, Pablo? Our noggin. Our noggin. Our noggin and our heart. Our head and our heart. And our dad. And our dad. Hey. <laughs> All right. So, but first, <laughs> we have some laughs coming up with the joke of the week. All right, Pablo, do you want to do the first one what or the second one? What room does not have a door? What room does not have a door? I don't know, Pavlos. What a room? mushroom. A mushroom! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pavlos gets the laughs. Pavlos gets the laughs. Okay, make sure you are up against the... Not against the mic, but close to the mic when you're chatting. Like okay, this. Like that, so everyone can hear you. All right, so now it's time for my joke of the week. I wonder which one... Pa- Pavlos is going to grade me. No, he's going to let the thing play through so we don't stop it. But ready? Here we go. Knock, knock. Who's there? Stopwatch. Stopwatch who? Stopwatch. You're doing it. Let me in. <laughs> oh, sad trombone. <gasps> oh, I got two sad trombones? <laughs> yeah. And then a mystery. A mystery. Okay. No, this is the... Like, what's that? Oh. Sad trombone. And then what's this one? I don't remember. Oh, this is... Yeah. yeah this- Mind blown. And then what's this one? To be continued? Yeah. To be continued. (laughs) All right. So next we're going to talk. Okay. So once again, I had a resource of the week ready, but I had it ready for Angela. So I'll do the resource of the week this week. And this is something Pavlos has liked types of these things before, but not this exact one. And it's Shrinky Dink's jewelry kit. And Angela loves jewelry. How much is Angela's getting her hair stuff? She's getting. Please. She's really into jewelry. So um, so we have the Shrinky Digs kit that she uses to make little charms. And it's pretty cool because you have these little plastic things and you, you paint them with your mom or dad or someone else. And then a parent or an adult will put it in the oven and it shrinks down and it's really, really cool. So if you want to pick up the set that Angela has, just go to five minutes with dad.com slash shrinky dinks. And that's our affiliate link to send you right over to Amazon to pick up that craft set for you. Hi. <laughs> Hi. That's our transition. Hi. (laughs) All right. So we got something important to talk about today. Working smarter, not harder. I got to tell you, Pablos, I really liked last week's episode. If you didn't uh, hear it yet, make sure you listen to it because it's all about change and it's all about navigating change. I remember, Pablos, we talked about some of the things that you look for to help make change easier. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. So if you haven't listened to that, um, I I want you to check out last week's episode. So definitely check that out. And, oh wait, Bavos, I almost forgot. Before we get into the main topic, I want to give a shout out to the website boardteachers.com. B-O-R-E-D teachers like school teachers.com and send a debt of gratitude and excitement because if you go right now to the main page not even some page that's really down 
five clicks away or whatever, you scroll down just a little bit, just a little bit, you'll see an article that says 25 best educational podcasts for kids and what's to love about them. Do you see that, Bobless? I have it right up on the screen. Yeah, Board Teachers. So if you go to boardteachers.com, you'll see that. But if it's been a while, just look for their resources and they have podcasts. And the article says, in a world where children are bombarded by screen time, podcasts for kids can provide a reprieve for bleary eyes, engaging both a new sense and children's imaginations. A whole world of excellent podcasts exists. For young children, this particular list dives into podcasts perfect for preschool and elementary age kiddos aged 3 to 12. And there are 25 podcasts. And look at number 25. What Do, do you recognize the name of that, Pavlos? Uh, does that say five minutes with dad? No. What about 24? No. What about 23? No. What about 22? No. What about 21? No. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We're nowhere on the list, Pavlos. Six, five, four, three. Wait a minute. Two. What about number one? Five minutes with dad, Pavlos. Pavlos, four-year-old Pavlos planned the best podcast for kids aged three to 12 According to BoardTeachers.com for educational podcasts. How does that make you feel? Good. Good? How awesome is it that a four-year-old said, you know what? I'm going to create a show. And then what did we do? We created a show and we have kept it up for how old are you now? Eleven. And so how many years have we been doing this? Seven. Yeah. So how cool is that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to board teachers. And thank you especially because I love thanking the websites when we appear on these lists. It's always on an honor and humbling, but not a lot of people thank the individual writer who put the list together. And this list was put together by author Amy at boardteachers.com. So big round of applause. Oh, we don't have applause. We'll do laughter instead. <laughs> big round of laughter for author Amy and a debt of gratitude to everybody who listens to our show and makes it so much fun for us. So thank you, thank you, thank you, board teacher. And thank you, author Amy. Let's transition now to the... Hi. <laughs> Topic of the week. I like, Pavlos, I, like, I like how you remember to go, hi. <laughs> All right. So this topic is super important. So Pavlos, let's set the scene here. Okay, ready? So it's Sunday and hi. you get home and you head to the computer hi. and you open up a document and what's on that document? Homework? I think so. You think so. And you started doing it and you were rushing. And I said, Pavlos, what is that? And you kind of moved in front. You, know, you were just in a zone getting your homework done. And I said, let us let me look over your shoulder a little bit. Let's sit down and let's chat about this. And what what was the assignment? So for younger Qualities kids. Quantities versus quality. Quantity. Versus quant- so quantitative versus qualitative. qualitative. Now, a lot of people here listening are either grownups or not yet in sixth grade. So this is a topic that either grownups haven't thought about in a while or kids might not have gotten to yet. And that's not really the point of this. You don't need to know what quantitative means or qualitative means, but this was an assignment for Pavlos. And Pavlos, you turned to me and I looked and I said, you want to know a little trick, didn't I? Yeah. And did you want to know a little trick? Yeah. Yeah. Are my little tricks usually pretty helpful? Like math. 49, 51. (laughs) 49 out of 50. Oh, so barely over 50% are helpful? No, 49 of them are. Under 50%? Mm, (laughs) 49.5. 49.5. Okay, so we, I sat down and I said, Pavlos had to, so he had a list of sentences and the sentences were something like, the cat has four legs. And then there was another one that said, the butterfly is beautiful. Things like that. And Pavlos had to identify whether the sentence was something that was a quantitative sentence or a qualitative sentence. And how you do it. Hang on, hang on. And if you don't know what quantitative is, I'm going to explain it here first. And then you, you can explain the secret, okay? So quantitative means 
having to do with a number. So the cat has four legs. It's something you measure. It's a number. So that is a quantitative sentence. A qualitative sentence has to do with something like what something looks like. Some It's a description of something. So if you said the the cat is yellow, that would be what it looks like. So it would be qualitative. It's a quality of something. So it's nice or it looks yellow. It's a quality. So Pavlos was going, looking, looking at the screen, trying to figure things out. And I said, let me give you a little hint on how you can figure it out. And Pavlos, do you want to teach people the hint on how you worked smarter? Yeah. Okay. So tell everybody. Quantitative, quantitative. is numbers and it has an N. Yes. Qualitative and what, is this, what it's like or- yeah, what and it's it doesn't like. Have an end. Yeah, so what it's like or what it looks like. So really, in this case, we only needed to remember quantitative because if we looked for something that was a number, something that could be measured, and it was not there, Pavlos knew to just check the other box, qualitative. But in this case, we also were able to say it's a quality, or the L stands for what it's like or what it looks like. So Pavlos, how fast? Did it take you before the before this trick, before this little mind trick to say N for number and you look for quantitative N for number? There's no N in qualitative. So when you were first looking at it, before we worked smarter together, it was taking you a little bit. You were trying to figure it out. Yeah. And when you kind of guessing a little bit too? Yeah. Yeah. And then once we once we had this moment where we said, let's work smarter, and we said, okay, number for quantitative. And look like or like for qualitative. How long did it take you to do your homework? Less than five minutes. Less than five minutes. And that is so important because we always talk about working hard. And working hard is important. Having a good work ethic and being willing to see a project through to the end, even when it's difficult, will help us in life. Especially in tough times. Sometimes we have to work hard to get through things. But it's super important that we use not just the power of our muscles to get through stuff, but the biggest asset, the biggest benefit we can provide our brains to a project. And that's how we work smarter. So now when Pavlos goes into school and the teacher says, Good, my goodness, Pavlos, how do you know all of the quantitative and qualitative so easily? Pavlos can say, Oh, because I'm working smarter, not just harder. Right, Pavlos? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I want everybody listening to be thinking of that before you just dive in to do a project. Take a minute to think, is there a way to do this smarter, not just harder? And we've talked about math magic. That's how when Pavlos was younger, he was four or five years old, and he was able to add and even multiply some pretty big numbers by using math magic, moving zeros out and then just multiplying the rest of them and then bringing the zeros back in. Do you remember doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Remember when you used, we used to be like, what, Pavlos, what's 20 times 30? And Pavlos would say, we take the zeros to the side. Then we got two sets of three. That's six. And then we bring the two zeros back. So six, zero, zero, six hundred math magic. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this episode, that's all we wanted to talk about is when we're in school and we're learning from our teachers and we're learning at home with our parents to see how we can make things smarter, not just harder. We show our work if the teachers want to see our work, but we can always check our work using these little tricks. So if Pablo's, if they ask him a question and they say, okay, I want you to identify whether this sentence is smart, is, is qualitative or quantitative and explain your reasoning. If Pavlos just says quantitative because he knows because N for numbers and he just says quantitative and doesn't explain his reading, his teacher's not going to give him a full grade. Right, Pavlos? No. Right. So, but now he can say quantitative because it has a number. He doesn't even have to say N for number. He can say quantitative because it's talking about four legs or qualitative because it talks about a color or a characteristic. And he knows the answer's correct in his head because he worked smarter, but he shows the work on the paper like the teacher explains. Because a lot of times teacher teachers will teach you to do something a certain way because they want you to practice the hard way sometimes so you can really learn it. 
But these little tricks to work smarter will help us later on in life and in school, even when we have to do it a different way, it helps us check our work to make sure that we are getting it right. What do you think, Pavlos? Good idea? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Pavlos, tell everybody, thank you for listening to 5 Minutes with Dad. Dad. What's that? Say, don't don't forget to buy don't those. Don't forget to buy those. Shrinky dinks, right? Thank you for listening to 5 Minutes with Dad. To connect with Pavlos, Angela, and Nick, subscribe to the 5 Minutes with Dad newsletter at 5minuteswithdad.com.